welcome to Letty Does Cooking with Style. Specifically, squash steaks with butter and sage edition. So I'm getting out this video and this photo set a little later than usual just due to scheduling issues. So it is currently the beginning of December. And as you can see here, I am winning, I am <laughs> wearing the winning apron, which is this squash apron with all of these different gourds. And then I got my necklace, which is supposed to be a little bit of sage going on here. And then of course I got the matching panties. And this is the full winning outfit. So with that, I'm going to be making the recipe that goes along with this outfit. So if you'd like to join me in making this recipe, here I have October's issue of Bon Appetit, and I am just going to be flipping over to page 50 right here, and the recipe for the squash steaks is going to be on the bottom right. And you can see the illustration for it here, and then the recipe is just going to be this short uh, piece of text down on the bottom of page 50. And if you can't see that because I have no idea what the footage looked like on my GoPro right now, just look for the link to the digital recipe in the description. So uh, yeah, let's get started. So first things first, I am going to need a cutting board. And I'm gonna need a knife. You guys were complaining how concerned you were the last time while I was trying to use that cleaver to cut the watermelon. So I got a new knife. This is a chef knife and I sharpened it. I haven't tested it out though, so I guess we're gonna find out how well that went. Knife, butternut squash. Look at it, so big, so smooth. It's a good pick. Lemons? Well, we need lemon juice, but y y you know how this goes. Garlic. Butter, which I have let soften at room temperature. And sage, which was actually kind of difficult to find, but yeah. Fra yeah, it's probably good. I haven't used sage in cooking before, so it's kind of funky looking. And it's kind of funky feeling. I, I I don't know if like some people have never seen sage before, but this is what sage looks like up close. It's textured really funky. I kind of like it. Anyway, so with that, that is. All right, no, I'm a liar. I'm a dirty liar. You need salt, pepper. And oil. There. And now with that, those are going to be your ingredients. Okay, just for the sake of me not accidentally dropping anything, I'm gonna move everything I'm not actively using over to this counter over here because I don't trust myself. And I probably shouldn't given, you know my history. So let's just, um, yeah, move everything I don't need over to this table over here. All right, now let's do this. So the first step is you need to take your banana squash and you need to cut the neck off of your squash and reserve the base for another use. So, um, I, I don't really know what the neck is. I'm assuming it's like this part. Yeah, so, cause it said the base, but I don't know if like the base is like just this butt. I don't know, I, I'm gonna use my discretion. So I think it's like here. Cut squash before. Okay, hold on. It's okay, everything is fine. I just need to line it back up with the mark that I had and then... Dear God, are they always so firm to cut into? Ah! 
Okay, now that I have showed that squash who's boss, um, it says to reserve the base for another use. Ooh, it's drippy. It has like little sockets. It's like it's sweating. Look at, look at the little sockets on the top. Hmm. Interesting. I, I don't, that's not relevant, but. I didn't know that's how squash work. It's kind of gross, but okay. I'm just gonna say now that um, I bought these uh, during my initially planned um, date for the shoot, which was almost a week ago at this point. Uh, so maybe the sweating is cause it's expired. I have no idea. We're just gonna like, assume they're okay and just kind of roll with it because I don't know if they're supposed to sweat or not but um yeah so that's that's what we got going on trim and peel neck so this thing okay um so it wants me to make steaks out of it um but I'm gonna cut off this circle part first. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's just cut off the circle part first. <gasps> Difficult! Okay, there we go. And now, my squash bottom has a hat. <laughs> I, I didn't cut myself or anything, it's just pressure against the table, that's all. Anyway, um, and then it wants me to cut off the rounded base, so I guess this is just deciding how thick I want my steaks to be. Um, and they probably won't cook all the way through if I make them too thick, huh? Uh, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Technique. Skill. Good squash. Okay. <laughs> There's a hole in it. <laughs> it's fine. All right, let's make our other steak. Oh, Shaggy would love some steak. Probably not these, but I'll take it to him anyway. Okay. The rounded sides. Cut them off. Then you got these. I want you to. Take off the whatever whatevers to the something somethings. Bitch! I am not sharp enough. So you know how I, I think it's Bon Appetit has like those how to professionally butcher a pig or a fish video. Well, how to professionally butcher a squash. You see, the best part of the squash is um this hole right here it's uh yeah you gotta make sure to keep the pocket it's it becomes a pocket of flavor later so um yeah you gotta make sure to pick a squash that has that and sweats uh to bring out the utmost flavor of it so yeah um, anyway, I'm gonna set these back aside because now it wants me to... Oh, I'm already over at the skillet. Okay, it wants me to heat one tablespoon of olive oil in a large skillet. Okay, so I'm gonna go try to do that now. Oh, fire! Uh, over what it says? Medium. Oh, you know what? <laughs> You probably should have put the oil in after you heat it up. 
That could have been bad. You see? I remember. All right, guys. So I have changed my entire <coughs> setup so that I can have a camera over here. So, um, yeah, don't, don't mind that little thing. That's the GoPro. So, hi, GoPro. Anyway, so I have put my oil in the pan. I think I got about a tablespoon worth. I'm not sure. Um, let's see. I need to cook squash turning every three minutes. So I guess I just dump these babies in here. Ooh. Always point your handle thingies in because you might drop it or something. I don't know. There's, there's your kitchen safety for the day. I'm just browning some squash. It's gonna take 15 minutes to do. So, um, this side of this one where the flavor pocket is is already browning, but the rest of it isn't. So, I, I don't know. Also, my oil dried out pretty fast. And I'm definitely turning these more than three minutes, or less than three minutes. I don't know, they keep making really loud noises. And it makes me worried I'm burning them. And that one's smoking. So am I burning them? Okay, so I'm just gonna assume it's done. Or at least it's gonna be. Um, now it says I need to add two tablespoons of unsalted butter. And I got that shit because the butter says the tablespoons on it. Dang, that's two tablespoons? That's a lot. Six sage leaves. Six sage leaves. One, two, three, four. Ah, that wasn't four. <laughs> uh, five, six. I guess I just need to put them in like that. Two crushed garlic cloves. Okay. Two crushed garlic cloves. I can do that. So, um, the next step is I need to remove from heat and stir in one tablespoon of fresh lemon juice. Okay. Remove from heat just means turn it off, I guess, for me. Um, and then it says I need some lemon juice. So I got some lemons here with my cutting board on the floor, so. Oh, this knife is sharp. It, it's just, I guess you're not meant to cut squash with this knife. Funny enough, I think you're probably meant to cut squash with that um, cleaver I had the last time. One tablespoon. One tablespoon. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that actually seems about right. Half a lemon's worth of juice. And season with flaky sea salt and pepper. Okay, I can do that. I can do that. Just gonna do a quick little... You know what, I need any more than that. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe I just wanted more than that so I could do that longer. I'm just gonna gently coat everything. And bada bing bada bang! Next I need to transfer to the plate and spoon sauce over. So let me get back to my other setup. Alright, and then plate your squash. Ooh! Oh I broke it. It's okay. I'll just put the broken side down. Uh, how do they have it? I, I can do that. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. All right. And then... Uh. Mm-hmm. No, come on. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And... 
Boom, sauce over. So it actually looks like in the picture they kept all the stuff. So I'll just, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I guess I'm keeping all my stuff too. This smells really good. Like of all the things I've had to cook for cooking with style, <laughs> this is the buttery. <laughs> Way better than the fish sauce. Bon appetit. Style. Bon appetit. Style. It actually looks like in this picture they kept the um, skin on the squash, which is kind of annoying because they told me to take it off. Or at least I think they did. I'm pretty sure they did. Anyway, uh, it kind of looks like fish it mostly smells like butter but i guess it all comes down to what does it taste like so let's find out all right so here we go so what's the right color i can't pick anything up my pocket that is my pocket my flavor pocket Flavor pocket. It's gonna fall. <laughs> Let's try it. Oh, <laughs> mm. Not bad. Um, there's something funky though. What is that? Hmm. I don't know. That flavor pocket might have gone bad. Uh, let's try a different cut. Hmm. It's not bad. But I also don't know if it's good because I'm tasting this, expecting it to be as bad as everything else I've made. But, um, it tastes funky. I don't even know how to explain it. It's like, it's like my tongue is fuzzy. There, there's like, there's something coating my tongue and I don't like it. So flavor wise, completely talking about flavor. It's okay. Um, it's too much butter for me. Uh, like I only ate two bites and I just, it, it's just butter. There's butter all over my lips. There's there's butter everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Actual butter face this time. Um, I, I don't like this. You, you can do with less butter. I, I think you can do it with less butter. Um, but I wanted to follow the recipe. I think the funky taste is probably the sage because I've never like, I, I've never had this feeling in my mouth before. Um, and it's like, yeah, it's like almost my tongue is a little numb. I, I don't know how to explain it. There's a coating on my tongue that feels like the sage leaf. So, if that's sage, mm, I don't really like it, but it smells really nice. So, I'm torn. I'll be honest, guys, I don't know how you can improve upon this recipe. Um, or if there's anything you can like omit or add because you basically need the butter components. Uh, you need the squash because otherwise you'd just be drinking butter. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll figure it out. Maybe try seasoning it a little differently or like messing with the measurements a little over on my photo set, which you can check out if you are my doer of stuff plus over on my Patreon. Uh, but otherwise guys, I would say that this wasn't a complete failure. So I guess this has been Cooking with Style and uh, let me know if you guys tried this recipe out in the comments below. And uh, yeah, bon appetit. <laughs> Bye.
Maybe I need to eat this with the sage. That's where the texture comes from. Okay. Nope. I fucked up.